hours of work. <laughs> it might take a couple weeks to get them retrained. Just to Everybody, welcome to Wild Wednesday Live. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. I'm Raylene and I'm going to be your host today from Quilters Haven and Just Notions. And of course, you guys are all getting signed on and you regulars know the drill. But uh, if anybody's new at this, we'd like to start the show every week with roll call. So if you'll just type in where you're watching from. <clears throat> and uh, hi, Debbie, you were the first one on today. And Joanne, we've got Cynthia, Leandra, Gretchen, Cindy, Terry. Everybody's getting all signed on and we appreciate that. I was afraid you guys would kind of forget about us since we had our two weeks off. Um, <clears throat> it was kind of nice for us to be able to, to focus on other things for a couple of weeks, but uh, actually, you know, Beth and I, as busy as we've been, we did kind of miss you guys on Wednesday. So we're happy to be back in the new year. Um, Let's see, there's Brenda and Connie, Deborah, Janet, Ruth. So lots of our regulars. I see some new faces as well. So if you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. We're super glad that you found us. So a few things we want to go over before we get started with today's demos. Um, first of all, if anybody is in the area of Yuma, Arizona, uh, Ron and I will be <clears throat> at the Yuma Desert Lily Colt Show this weekend, Friday and Saturday, 9 to 4 each day. And that, I believe it's at the convention center there in Yuma, but if you Google Desert Lily Quilt Show, that all the information on the show will pop up. And then Beth is going to be at Road to California in a couple of weeks for all those of you that are going to that show. I will not be at that one only because we're just so busy usually getting ready for Phoenix, which uh, Beth and I will both be at. And Phoenix this year, the Quilt Craft and Sewing Festival is January 27, 28, and 29th. Now, I do want to mention about that show because that is one of our sponsors' shows. Um, again, Quilt Craft Sew Mall is who sponsors Wild Wednesday. Um, you can go online and uh, get a $2 off uh, your tickets. There is a coupon right on the quiltcraftsew.com. Uh, web page. But also, if you know, that is such a big show. And as if you've gone before, you know that it's in two buildings. <clears throat> so for someone that has a lot of trouble walking, you might want to consider you can actually go on the website quiltcraftso.com. Um, it's uh, not the mall, but just quilt craft so without the word mall. And you can actually arrange to rent a scooter ahead of time. Now, I believe they will not be uh, renting them on the day of at the show. I believe you do have to pre-register to rent one, but that option is there for you for that big show that covers so much ground. Um, and then, of course, when we are at that Phoenix show, be sure that you stop by uh, both Beth and my booth and say, I get wild with you on Wednesday, and we have a special gift for you, and it is different in both booths, so you wanna be sure that you check us out in both spots. And um, just a reminder that any uh, vendor specials that are happening today on the show, those will be good through midnight on Friday, and after that, they go away, so if you see something that uh, they're demonstrating that you wanna take advantage of their special, be sure you don't delay. As soon as the show's over, be sure that you get on, <clears throat> get on and order those items. And uh, again, if you go to the Quilt Craft Sew Mall, and that's what's scrolling at the bottom of your page, that's where you're going to find today's vendors quick and easy, as well as lots of other of your favorite Quilt Craft and Sewing Festival vendors. And I do want to mention, you know, we're hearing a lot uh, because, you know, we have vendor friends throughout the United States and we all stay in touch. And we are hearing a lot about a lot of the shows in the Midwest being canceled um, over, you know, the fears and things that are going on. But we want to remind you to please still check the Quilt Craft Sew Mall when you need to buy supplies and support those vendors whenever you can before you're going to those big chain stores. Um, we've heard a lot of people commenting that some of the shows are having to cancel because so many vendors have retired or they weren't able to weather the storm. And the way they weather the storm is with your support. And you guys have been terrific throughout the last couple of years, but we just want to remind you that in those places where the shows are still being canceled, we still need your help to keep everybody in business and so that they're there when you need them. 
And let's see, anything else that we need to go over before we get going? Um, we do want to remind you that if you have questions for the vendors during their demos, to hold those questions until the end, and we'll bring them back on and do a question and answer period. And of course, if you ever miss um, a live, you can always go back and watch all of our shows on our YouTube channel, Wild Wednesday Live. It's very easy to find. But while you're there, be sure you hit that subscribe button so that you never, ever miss an episode. Or if you ever just need to go back and rewatch a demo. <clears throat> and I do want to say, if I do, I know I probably sound a little congested. My allergies are going nuts with this crazy weather we're having here in Arizona. It was 32 degrees yesterday morning when I got up but it's 70 now. So it's just been up and down, cold, hot, and my allergies are not handling it very well. <clears throat> but at least I'm not sick. So that's always a plus. Okay, and we do have some great door prizes we're going to be giving away later in the show. Now, again, if you're new to us, later in the show, I'm going to give you a keyword um, or, you know, special phrase, whatever you want to call it. And once I give you that, all you do is type that in to the comments section. You only need to do that one time. And then after the show, I will go through all those, put those all on a big wheel, and we'll pick the winners that way. So you're going to want to check back right here on the Wild Wednesday Facebook page. Usually about an hour after the show, I have all the winners posted, and it will tell you how to redeem the prize if you are a winner. So today we have five terrific door prizes. <clears throat> we have a gnome kit or a gnome pattern with calendar pages that is being donated by Beth from the Fabric Chicks. Linda from Winter Designs is donating a $25 gift certificate to her website. Um, someone will win two Wild Wednesday Live coffee mugs from Wild Wednesday. And we have a goodie bag of notions from Just Notions and two uh, Quilters Square Ups from Quilters Haven. So again, we will be giving you the secret word later on in the show. So I think we finally got all the housekeeping out of the way. So let's get going. We have two terrific demos today. Um, unfortunately, Stephanie from the uh, from Farrell's Country Stitching had to reschedule at the last minute due to some circumstances beyond her control. But we're going to have her on next week instead. <clears throat> so we're going to just have our two demos today. But we've asked both of them to do a little more than they normally would do. So I'm looking really forward to seeing both of their demos. So we're going to start first with my co-host, Beth. Beth from the Fabric Chicks. Let's bring Beth in. Hi, Beth. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited for your, not the one demo. I don't really care about that so much, you know, but the other demo I'm really excited for. You know, I have <laughs> the other demo just because I know you love them so much. I feel like it's just a personal attack on me and Mary Vitti. <laughs> um, at this point, I, uh, all of our followers are pretty much like, finding little know me things to just irritate um, poor Mary Beattie. So um, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're like hiding in her yard at this point. Mary and I need to, we need to form a support group. Yeah. Yeah. For those yeah. who can't stand gnomes. Well, it's, and it's not even so much that I can't stand them. They just creep me out. I think it's the little faceless things. I have no idea what it is, but they've just never appealed to me at all. Well, just so you know, that is like the hot item for the next I, it's like I know. Anywhere. I'm so, seeing all these new fabric lines, and that's all they are. Gnomes, gnomes, gnomes. So. I know. I know. They're I just have to deal with it. So cute and cuddly. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can show everybody what you've got today. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, so we I've got two demos. Um, of course, I um, I love to like stress myself out. So one of them, like I was sleeping last night, and I was like, what could we do that's kind of new and you know a different take on things? And even if you're not into gnomes, we're all into panels. Panels are like the hottest ticket item right now. I sell more panels than we sell of anything. And so I'm always looking for different ways to use panels. So um, so I've got the gnome panel. It actually was a book. Um, so I'm going to show you that one first. My original demo was the kitchen um, boa, but I'm going to show you that later because, you know, who needs towels to wipe their hands on when they're cooking? So overrated. But I have this panel. And if you're new to, to watching us, I mean, I know you see me as a co-host every other week, but um, I actually have a shop in Gardnerville, Nevada. And um, we do demos and techniques. We try to teach you something every Monday at 4 p.m. 
And then on Wednesdays, we do a live sale at 4 p.m. So set your calendars for Monday and Wednesday at 4. Today, we will be having a live sale. So it's total chaos in the, the back room right now because we're still numbering things and trying to organize and get things ready. Um, so you might see some numbers on these because these will go on this, the sale for this afternoon. You can always call us um, if you if you want to order anything, 775-267-0204. And Christy will post the links for our Facebook page and all that good stuff. But um, I'm not so good. We're really shorthanded. So our website is not necessarily totally up to date, especially with kits and things that I just kind of get up in the morning and make. So, um, so I took this panel, and it's actually a book panel. So... This is the Gnomes Through the Holidays. It had a different panel that was made for quilts, um, for quilting for a wall hanging, but we sold out of that. And then I had a bunch of the book panels left. So I was like, what can we do with the book panels? So um, so later on, you can buy this at our four o'clock show. Um, if you order it now, then uh, some of my regulars know what to do. So if you comment, Christy will keep an eye on that, hopefully. Um, hopefully. You guys like to challenge me, I know. Don't ask for the crinkle because it's out. We will be getting more crinkle in soon. Crinkle goes in the book. That's what makes this a lovely sound that I'm sure you could make for your grandkids and your kids will love you forever. Listen to that. Oh, so textural and fun. I um, know we should be getting some in soon, but it literally has been on back order for a while. But this is what the panel is originally made to make. So we all know we can make these, we can whip these books up super fast. But what I did is I, oops, let me throw this out of my way. I actually have like seven projects going on here we're, because we're so short staffed. I'm like kidding and getting ready for shows and it's like a total chaos. Um, so anyways, what I did is I cut the book apart. So here is one of the panels. Let me find one that's good. So here is Hello to Fall. So what I did is I cut the panel down to be, um, I cut another one down actually even better. Okay, this is the one I want. So I cut the panel down to this size. So we're making snack mats because you guys all have place mats already. You already know what to do with the bigger with the bigger panels, but this is a smaller panel and you would have to add a bunch of borders to make it into a place mat. But um, we all need snack mats apparently. So I cut it down to here. You're, because it's meant for a book, it's not gonna have the blue on all four sides, but that's not gonna matter because we are going to piece together um, three strips to make, well, kind of like you're making a nine patch block, except for we need more because it's oblong. Bless you. Roger just sneezed, so the camera might've shook. Um, so we, I pieced these together, just the one and a half inches by the width of the fabric and if it wasn't the exact, because I didn't want to do math, I'm a blonde. If it wasn't the exact size to line up with this edge, I could just trim it, put it, kind of center it, trim it. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to be sitting there doing the math to make sure that it's the exact size. If I wanted to, I could have measured the edge of the panel and then divided these squares and then added a quarter inch to each seam, that kind of thing. Way too much math. So I just decided I like one and a half inch strips. So I cut those, I sewed them together. The kind of the tricky thing, and I learned this from Alex Anderson like 35 years ago. Um, I know when I was a baby. Um, I actually took her um, scrap bag beige class 30 years ago where I learned a ton of techniques. So what you do with the nine patches is you iron one of them with the seams going out towards the edge. And then you iron one of them with the seams going in so that when you cut them into your little subunits like this, you can nestle them inside of each other. So I don't know if you're, you can get this, but I'm gonna line these up like this and then they just nest right into there. And then I would, except for I can't find any pins at the moment, um, but I would put a pin on this side of the seam and a pin on this side of the seam. So like this little unit here, as tiny as it is, I would put four pins in it. I put a pin here and here and here and here. Because when I flip those over, I want them to line up perfectly. I don't want it to be off like that. So I am a little bit, I'm not anal about too many things, but that is one thing I like my seams to match up. So I'm willing to take a little bit of extra time to pin it correctly. 
And I'm going to tell you, because we are doing so many things and we're so scattered and we're, you know, I work at, I do samples at home at night. I do samples upstairs. I do samples downstairs. So my supplies are all over the shop. And so I had thick T-pins this morning to pin with. Horrible. Don't use thick T-pins. I think a lot of times you guys can learn from my mistakes or my trials. Um, don't use the T-pins. I love glass head pins that are pretty long. Um, I don't have any. I should have pulled some from the shelves. Um, but I had a bunch of pins and I don't know if you guys suffer from arthritis or not, but I had a ton of pins that were tiny. Like, look at, this is from here to here. It's like an inch long or something. I don't even know how long it is. It's like an inch and a quarter. It's so small, even though it's got a glass head pin, which I love, it's so short that it's hard to maneuver. Maybe I just have big fat fingers or something, but I like the long skinny pins. So, so I would get a pin that's like, I don't know, maybe one and three quarters. I don't know what, I like the ones with the orange heads, okay? Or the new magic pins that have the blue heads. Those are super easy to grip. Um, but so that's how I, I pin those together and then I stitch them. And so I'm gonna lay it right here so you can kind of get an idea like this, right? And then I'm going to lay them to, what, remember, you're going to lose a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. So you're going to have to sew a bunch of them. It's going to look like this. So see how cute that is when you get it all sewn up? And then I put binding on it. And of course, because I did it this morning and I quilted it with white thread so you can kind of see better for the demo. So I just quilted it. I haven't even trimmed it. I quilted it pretty, um, pretty lightly. But this would be a great one for you to do, um, to give to your grandkids or to send to somebody that um, you want to, to think of every month. You can send them a cute little mat. Um, and then with the binding, I actually, because I did it this morning, I used the Unique Stitch, which is a, some kind of a bonding adhesive. It dries super fast. Um, I've never used that on binding before, but it did do a pretty good job. I don't know if you can see in there the binding. So, and then I, of course, I've always got to do embellishments. So I added Rick Rack right down this here. So we do have the kits available. Devin's upstairs kitting them as we speak for this afternoon's sale. So that's that. If you guys have questions, you can ask me after whenever we do that. Um, questions and answers. Then the next one I have, the next demo I have is the kitchen boa, which is a scarf with a towel. So I think it's best to um, wear clothes underneath it, but maybe if you want to get lucky, you could just wear this when you're cooking dinner. You just never know. Um, but this is a kit that we have for $24. It comes like this. So you can actually use any fabric you want. We did little cocktails just to do something fun and the new Stephanie Brandenburg frond fabrics. Um, so it comes like this with the foundation and um, look at, she's so cute there. She's, her sweater matches her towel, um, but it's so hot girls. So you won't have to use as much heat in your house. Um, it, this is the foundation piecing. And Karen and I worked on the original sample. We've never done foundation piecing. So for us, it was a little bit tricky figuring out what to do. So I'm gonna just give you a couple of the hints that we did. Um, I marked, and I'm sure Raylene has a 45 degree ruler that she could sell you because she makes rulers right at her house. Um, I didn't have any 45 degree rulers, but every ruler you have has the 45, the 60, the 90, the 30, the 90. So you can use your regular rulers for any of this, but you're gonna want to see how there's a 45 degree line going this way. And then there's also a 45 degree line going this way. So of course, if you cut it the wrong way, even though it looks like it should be right, it's not gonna lay down here right. See how it doesn't go to the edges? So. Um, both times I've tried to make this project, I've had one that goes the wrong way. I don't know why I cut the wrong way first, but I, I marked it here. So I know this is the top of my fabric. You're going to cut, um, two and a half inch 
strips by the width of your fabric. So here's my width of my fabric. And then I'm gonna cut it into nine inch strips. Do this process first. Don't try to skip ahead like I did because it won't make any sense. So make sure you cut your two and a half inch by width of fabric strips and then cut your nine inch strips. So once you have your nine inch strips, then you're gonna put these at your ruler like this and you're gonna put line it up with your 45 degree mark. I'm trying to get out of Roger's way so that he can get in close to show you guys. So I've got, this is my 45 degree line here and I'm just going to line it up from the corner here of my nine inches. And I'm going to find my rotary cutter in this mess and I'm gonna cut it. And then I'm not gonna move my ruler, I'm gonna flip my fabric around, okay? And then I'm gonna line that up with the corner again and make sure this is lined with the edge and I'm gonna cut it there, okay? So hopefully this is right. So then I've got my foundation piecing here. I'm gonna start right here in the middle on number one. So they're all numbered. So you're gonna start with number one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, you get it. So I've got number one's laid down, it's just right there. Number two, I'm gonna lay down, um, let's see here. It's gonna go like this, right? In the whole scheme of things, it's gonna lay this way. So I'm gonna pull it over like this and there'll be a little quarter inch here and a quarter inch tail right there, okay? And you're gonna sew a quarter inch here and then you'll flip it over, iron it like that, okay? And then you'll lay down your number three and then your number four and then do the whole thing. And then your last piece is gonna be this piece here. In the pattern and kit comes the towel that you cut in half. So it's super easy, just cut this in half. And then you're going to take a bigger piece of fabric and you're going to fold it in half to create this little finished edge here so that you have that on both sides. And then for the trim, you're going to take the uh, a piece of fabric like this, whatever size that is, you're going to iron it under and under so that you've got kind of a rolled hem, but not really. And then just lay it down here and top stitch it. Hope that makes sense, okay? So that gives you the cute little um, trimmed edge. So that is, and then you just fold the towel, um, kind of pleat the towel, stuff it up inside of your open end here, and then um, top stitch it. So that creates the, the um, kitchen boa. And I think that's all of my demos. I do have a tip of the day though, um, because I was having a really hard time threading my machine last night. Uh, could have been the glass of wine or it could have been that it was late at night. Um, but I saw some somebody had on Facebook that, um, that if you put a piece of white fabric or white paper or white batting behind your needle, it will light up the whole of your needle, which is super true. And then you can, at, at least you can see where you're aiming for. So that's my tip of the day. That's all I have, Raylene. <clears throat> well, that was a lot. I love those little snack mats. That's totally cool, even though they were gnomes, you know, right. and by the way, Rondi, thank you for joining our support group on the gnomes. I saw that. But those are adorable. And you know what? I was sitting there watching when you were doing that. You could so easily, the little square border that you did or the side yeah. piece, yeah. you could do a matching mug rug for it too, just out of like, what, yeah. six or nine of those, one, two, three, nine of those little squares. Yeah. yeah so, so could you get on that and add that when you, yeah, in your I'll spare get, time? You know what? I'm going to get that done this afternoon before my four o'clock show. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to buy any of these things that you showed today <clears throat> and they aren't able to watch you later, tell them what they should do. Um, you can watch it until Friday, so you don't have to watch it live. It's better to watch it live because we do tons of giveaways. Sometimes the giveaways are really nice. Sometimes they're not so nice. Sometimes they're <laughs> just random things that we find as we're cleaning up or leftovers from projects that I've done. And I just say, hey, who wants this? Like I had little pieces of batting the other day um, and whoever, like a bunch of people wanted it. 
Some people might not get it because I actually just used it for the mug rug. I pulled it out of somebody's basket and used it <laughs> for the mug rug. Now I'll find you guys some more upstairs. Um, so a lot of times we just have extra stuff and we just put it into, see, turn around, Roger. We, we're trying to get organized for the new year. Look at, these are all of the, the ba baskets that already have stuff from Monday's demo. So we just kind of uh, try to throw it, the giveaways in there and, uh, and send them when we send out our packages. So you have till Friday to watch. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you in a little bit when we bring you back in. So now you can go take a little break. Okay. All right. See you again. All right. Thanks, Beth. Okay. So next up is obviously one of, another one of our, I said today was like fan favorite day because everybody always loves what Beth shares and, and you equally love all the great things that Linda Winter from Winter Design shares. So Linda has actually got a bunch of new stuff to share with you. So we're going to bring her in so she can get started. Hey, Linda, happy new year. Hey, happy new year to you too. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, so, we're so happy to have you back. So I'm just going to turn it over to you because I know you have a ton of stuff to share with us today. Oh, perfect. And it's nice to have extra time too. So yes. today I want to do new year, new projects. So I've got a bunch of new stuff. Some of it you might've seen before, but they are all new templates, new projects, new templates means they're not on my website yet. So I'm going to extend my wild Wednesday live WWL coupon code till I can get these new templates online. So you'll still be able to buy them and take advantage of the discount. So it will not expire Friday night like I normally do at midnight central time. So I'm going to extend it for a while. So I'm going to put these templates on the website tomorrow, but they will not be shipped until I get them cut. They're that new, but I think they'll be worth waiting for. I think you'll be excited. So I always have customers that are asking me, why don't you make this? Why don't you make that? And a lot of times I'm like, like what? So they'll make me a sample. Darla Bacala has been really good about that. Tris, Tris, T-R-I-S, Fisher has been good about that. Lisa's been helping me with stuff. So this time around, I have projects that have lots of hands on, lots of input from other people. Let me show you a little project from Darla. This was one of those, what? <laughs> this is a tiny pouch. This little guy here, right over here, let me put it here. This little guy here, I don't know if you can see that right there is washi tape. Do y'all know washi tape? Washi tape is stuff that you can get at the Dollar Tree, you can get it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, wherever. But she added it because this is just clear vinyl and she stitched the, the zipper along. So I want to show you a little bit about this guy and how it comes together. So here is clear vinyl, which you can use from packaging that you've got your sheets, your bedspreads in, that kind of stuff. Here's another one. This is out of your faux leather kind of material. You can see it's got a yellow lining inside there. But this guy here, there's two sizes. It comes from this ruler here. So you can see why I said, what? When she told me about this. This ruler, you're basically going to cut. And what you're going to do is stitch one side of the zipper down. When you stitch the one side of the zipper down, I'll have a video, of course, on this and step by step. We're going to be stitching those sides together. Then we're going to bring these guys here and we're going to stitch that together. And then we're going to do a box plate and a box plate. All of that turns into this. So if it doesn't make any sense, just know there'll be a video coming and it's going to be a really cool thing to make out of scraps of leftover stuff that you have. It doesn't take much. This is a two and a half by 15 inch, 15.5 ruler. It actually makes a little bit bigger than this. Why did Darla make this? Well, she won one of our Christmas ornament contest prizes and it was the thumb screws that Martelli has. They're four little thumb screws and she wanted something to put them in. So this was the perfect size and she came up with this method. And I thought, how cool is that? Let's make a ruler. Why did I do a ruler? Because you can use any ruler, but why? Because it's two and a half by 15 and a half. We have two and a half by 16, two and a half by 12, two and a half by 24. You've got to measure, and I don't want you to have to measure. When you're working with vinyls, with plastics, with leathers, with faux leathers, with cork, any of that stuff, it typically slips. You guys know the no slip material. This right here is a faux leather. You can see how when I move that, the template and this material, this faux leather that has this ugly backing, they stay together. So when we go to cut, as I'm cutting and cutting and cutting, 
I don't have to worry about that slipping. That's the no slip material. And with this, I don't have to worry about measuring. So it's a really cool project. This is done by the two by 12 and a half inch ruler, both of these. So that little guy here is called Tiny Pouch and that's by Darla. And again, I'm putting out the rulers, two rulers for you. I'll sell them on the website individually, but I'll also sell a bundle if you like the idea of doing that. And again, it can be done out of your scrap. So that's a really fun one to do. And by the way, I have a trick for all of you that hate doing the zippers, the one-sided tape. I've got somewhere, you know, this and the forks, if you've ever done any of those things. And then they've got all kinds of, you know, jigs that you can make. But what I'm going to tell you is when you're separating your zipper, don't take the zipper pull off. Just snip a little bit off and a little bit off and then take our tweezers and pick out the leftover stuff. Just pick that out. So now I don't have to put that onto one side. I just have to put it on, I don't have to put it on both sides. I just have to put it on the one side. So when I bring this around, and again, you'll see it in the video, we're gonna feed that in. We'll be feeding in like this. So that's kind of a cool trick that I figured out because it's just a pain to have to try to use whatever jig method and put both of the zipper poles. This zipper pole, there's a little notch here and a little notch there. And when you do that, it's hard to do. With this method of trimming off and just picking out the excess, you only have to feed in one of those zipper poles. So that might be a good tip for any of you that are making those really cool bags that require you, know, you to use one side of the tape. Okay, so I wanna show you this bag and I wanna show you this basket. These guys here are the same project the same template. You can see here, we've got a nice little chain here, basically all our accessories here and here, and there's a drawstring with a casing. So there's a casing at the top, there's a casing at the top, there's a separation here. So we're adding this casing and then we've used whatever it is for a drawstring. I had a leather that has this nice gold accent on there that really plays up with the gold that you have in here and the gold that you have in here. I wanna to turn to the bottom though, because I want you to see one, two, I'm going in the camera, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six pieces that come together. For any of you that know my box bag template, when we flip over, we have four pieces that come together. This changes the shape a little bit. So I think it's a little bit dressier. So this right here, when you pull the drawstring, you've got a cute little bag that you can carry literally as a purse, which is great. I'm also gonna make a sample that will have no casing here, no straps here, but inside you'll have a piece of fabric that's about this high and there'll be a drawstring up here. So you'll draw the drawstring, you'll have handles down here. And when you pull this, you've got a little bit more space. If you knit or crochet, it's a great bag to carry. I'm gonna show you the template for that in a minute because I wanna show you this. I know y'all can't tell on camera, but this is stiff. This is not. This has SF101. It's a um, woven interfacing. It's just kind of a nice lightweight one. And one layer on the outside, one layer on the inside, depending on the kind of fabric you use, you may only do one layer on the outside to give it a little bit of shape. Let me show you in the middle too, because inside of here with the same template, sneak peek, there's a pocket and a pocket. So there are two pockets that are easily made with this template. You're not having to measure or do any cutting at all. And they're sewn inside those seams when you put them together. We looked at the bottom. I want you to see the inside too. Inside of here, can you see how those six pieces come together? And there's a pocket here and a pocket over here. You don't have to add the pockets, but I sure like the pockets. So all of those come easily together. You can whip this up super fast and super easy. How do I know? Because I made this one in about 10 minutes before I left today. So I'm going to take some of these things out just so you can see. Gnomes, Beth, gnomes. I love it that we both had gnomes on the brain. Gnomes are really popular these days. If you do knitting, crochet, whatever kind of embellishments, fill this full. But I wanted this to be stiffer, to stand up by itself so that you've got those six petals coming together, or the six pieces coming together on the outside. You've got the six pieces coming together 
on the inside, but this is a practical whatever you're working on bag, bag that you can use. You can put handles on here if you want. You can put one strap on here if you want. But I love the idea of crocheting, knitting, which I don't do, but all of those things, but all of your sewing supplies. If you're going to be going to a class, this is great to take and have all of your stuff plopped down. It sits up nice and easy. You don't have to fight with this. There are a lot of projects that they're cute, but they kind of dump over. This has fusible foam on the outside and fusible foam on the inside. I always like to do the faux binding method where my inside, because it's fusible foam, actually, sorry, fusible foam here and SF-101 on the inside. Because this SF-101 is lighter weight, it did give me a little bit more for me to create a faux binding. So you can see how I didn't have to do any binding there, but look how cute this is and how practical that is. Okay, so let's pull over the template for that so you can see. This guy here, it looks kind of like my box bag. My box bag is a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. The angle's a little bit different. There's six of these that you sew together. With my box bag, there's four that you sew together. So this guy here makes this. It makes this, and there's going to be a ton of other projects that this will make too. This to me is going to be another really fun one. The box bag has always been my favorite template until I came out with the storage pod. And then when I came out with the storage pods, it's like, sorry, box bag, you got replaced with the storage pod. But this is going to be another that I really love. And I'm going to be making a bunch of these to have all over my studio for all of the scraps, for all of the things that I need by me, but I don't want all over. Because if you guys know, I'm kind of an organizational mess. So this right here is just a perfect way to do it. And again, because it has the six pieces, it stands straight. It stands up nicely. It holds up better for a real practical basket. So that's a fun one. Okay, so I want to pull over two more templates that I don't have a project to show you. They are similar but different. So this is the Petal Basket 4. The Petal Basket 6. Can you see how these are similar but different? They have a curve and they have straight. So we've got a curve here. We've got straight. We've got a curve here. This is like the box bag, but it's curved. So that's going to be an Easter basket, a Halloween basket, a bunny rabbit, anything that's going to bow out a little bit. It'll be this, but it will be narrower at the top and it'll bow out. So it'll be perfect for all of those kid kind of things. So the four petal, you sew four together. The six petal, you sew six together. Duh. But it's the same idea, but it will look different. These guys, similar, but they will be different. So these are so new that I haven't had a chance to make projects, but stay tuned. With Easter coming up, I can promise you I'll be doing some really fun Easter baskets with bunny ears and bunny faces, and then some nice, serious Easter baskets for those ones that are a little bit older and don't want the cutesy. So similar, but different. So those are new templates too. Okay, I know not all of you are into zippers, but I will tell you, you need to get into zippers for this set of templates. You guys have seen this before. It's called the dumpling. It's called the persimmon. It's called the clam shell. If you look at this, this was a quilt block left over from a project that Lisa was working on. There's another coordinating quilt block from the same project. Leftover blocks that you worked on are perfect for these. And look how wide that mouth is. It opens all the way up. I have four sizes of these. And again, if you don't do zippers, you're going to want to learn to do zippers because this is so cute. So I have a six inch template. I have a seven inch. Where is it? At Lisa's house. I have an eight inch template and I have a 10 inch template. So I want to show you some projects done with these because they are so cool, so cute. And this is the gift to give for any occasion for man, for woman, for boy, for girl, for a child, whatever cork. Look how fun that is with cork and you do a coordinated fabric. I want you to see surged edges inside. I'm going to show you two that are not surged. Gitter dunners like me, you're going to surge the edges. If you don't have a serger, you can use your sewing machine and do a zigzag there. Or like one that I showed you way back last year, I did a piece of binding here and just put binding tape 
over this piece here. So it gave a nice finish inside. So I'll have all of those in the video, but this is adorable with the cork. You know, cork is the big thing. Okay, this right here, scraps. This is quilt as you go. I love quilt as you go, but it's gonna take more time because you're quilting as you go. You're gonna piece all of that. So you've got your fusible fleece or fusible foam or batting. I will tell you the smaller you go, the less you wanna do foam because foam is harder to do on small. But can you see inside a nice finished edge there? These finished seams here, it's more work to do that, but they sure look nice. So if this is something you're making and selling, this template, this complete template here is going to be the way to go with this finished edge. So you make the decision. And again, my videos will show you how to do that. That's the six inch right there. This guy here, how cute is this? You all have vinyl fabric maybe that you bought. Vinyl, look how cool that is with the light. And then look at the great coordinating fabric there. I've stuffed it because this doesn't have fusible foam in here. This has SF 101. It's not gonna hold up as much. So you decide what you wanna have. I love adding straps to this. So the coordinating fabric there is a great job. And again, Lisa did this one too. Lisa, thank goodness, came to my rescue over the holidays. If you all watched on my Facebook, Philip and I were busy building catwalks. <laughs> it's crazy. Go watch if you haven't seen on my Facebook. Go look at the pictures and go watch. Okay, I have favorites, and this is one of my favorites, the lemon bright springing. I love it. I had found this ribbon, make it sweet, and I thought, how cool is that with the lemon and lemonade? And again, you can see inside surged edges. You don't have to finish those edges off, but you could, again, add a piece of binding on there if you wanted to. But look how wide open that is. So clamshell, if you want to say that, because it opens up like a clamshell. So I want to show you the biggest one. This is the 10 inch. And I love this fabric and fussy cutting is easy to do. The new template, I've asked them to make a couple changes to this. The new template is going to have a hash mark here, a hash mark here. And on this edge here, up a quarter inch. And why are we doing up a quarter inch? If you don't want to have a seam on the binding, you can put your fabric on the fold here. And with the fabric on the fold there, your seam allowance, your seam allowance there will need to be a quarter inch less. So if you're working with something on the fold, let's pretend that I have that on the fold. We're going to put that down, lining up. See how I'm not lined up there? You'll line up the quarter inch mark with your fabric. So where the hash mark will be and the hash mark will be is where your fold will be. That allows you to do this where you've got a fold on the bottom. That makes it faster and easier too. This, because it was one directional fabric, you can see again, the bird fussy cutted there and that beautiful butterfly fussy cutted here. Look how large this thing is. This holds all kinds of goodies. This would be the most amazing cosmetic bag. This would be wonderful to hold all of your whatevers, your tools, your makeups, your um, um, cell phone stuff, all of that. It's big. And again, add a handle on there if you want, but you don't have to. Fusible foam on the outside, nothing on the inside, totally up to you. And can you see the nice finished edges? This is another project where we finished off the edges in here. Inside of this one, I pulled out this. This is another one of my favorites, our little bumblebees with the honeycomb. And you can see another strap that I found. And this is a B, B E E beautiful. So inside of here, what do I have? I have another one because we have 10, 8, 7, and 6. So they all go inside of each other. So if you're looking to make a really nice gift to give or to sell, the four templates work beautifully together. But do you see how cute that is? And this one, there is no seam there. So what I just talked about with the new templates that will be coming out, they are going to have those hash marks so you can do the fold if you want. If you don't want, if you're going to be piecing two together, then again, just like this is, you can see. So you decide how you want that done. So clamshells are so much fun. This is the little guy here that fits right inside of there. So these are really a lot of fun. And I do hope you all will take advantage of that. The wedge template, this is the wedge. You can see how it's fatter at the bottom there. 
but it has, again, a nice little zipper compartment. Look how much space there is. I've got some stuffing in there. This is just strips. This is another project, the project that Darla did for me. And she used my wedge template, this guy here. So this one's scrappy. What she did with this, though, was she used my scrappy happy template set. I have a set of templates called Scrappy Happy, and this allows you to get different widths, different lengths. Fussy cuts, this is a template. These are the fussy cut frames. So if you wanted to have text, if you wanted dogs in there, if you wanted little bunny rabbits, whatever it is in your fabric, you can fussy cut with that. So this one is the wedge. What's nice about this is the zipper is straight. There's no curve. So if you're looking for a get or done zipper bag, this would be a really good one to do. She also made these with the mesh. And her tip with the mesh, which I thought was great, is don't do the whole bag mesh. Because when you get down here to box everything up, remember the template has in here these cut marks. Both these, this template and this template, they have those cut marks, which means the box bottom will be easy. But if you had mesh coming here together, it's tougher to do. So add your cotton fabric where you're doing the harder work and then have this so you can still see inside here. Perfect for your rotary cutter, for your blades, for whatever. And she used a zipper tab right there for the edge. So that was a fun one. Do you guys remember the last time I did the Facebook Live, I talked about the bottle this guy here, my bottle template, bottle bag, and I wanted to do the shorter one, and I showed you how to adjust the template. Well, guess what? I came out with a new template. So I have three templates that will be bottles. This one here is the regular one. This is the short one, and then I'm going to have a taller, wider one. So the big bottles of liquor or champagne or whatever it is, but also just a great gift. You can see inside of here, you can add the little bottles of Tabasco sauce and all of that stuff. But it's great just to give somebody, if it's somebody at the hospital or somebody that's helped you out, give them some of their favorite candies. If you're going to the movie, you can't carry this in, but you can certainly carry this in your purse and pull this out. But how cute of a gift would that be? Okay, so I mentioned the gnomes, and I want to very quickly tell you about the gnomes because it's so much fun. These guys here, my gnome kit, my gnome template kit, I did it at Christmas time, and as soon as I put it on, it sold out. So I told everybody, well, if you're interested in me doing a gnome kit for holidays, I might do that. And all of a sudden, everybody was buying it. I haven't even shown you what's in the kit yet. But this is my Valentine's one. These things here, they're all goodies that go with the gnome kit. There's three beards. There's five pieces of felt. There's five pieces of fabric. There's a bag full of little doodad goodies, embellishments, all kinds of good, good, good stuff. And you get the gnome template to make these little gnomes. Valentine's Gnome. I had somebody that called me and asked me to make a St. Patrick's Day kit. So I've got one of those working as well. This came in from our Christmas ornament contest. Isn't that adorable? And then Shirley made this. This is Kathy Dillier, by the way. And then Shirley made this, Shirley Covert, and she made this to wrap around a package, but it could go on a book as well. I like the idea of adding a pocket so it can be a gift card too. I don't have a video done on making these yet, but look how darn simple and easy that is. So you know it's going to stitch up really, really fast. So these guys are super cute and it will be a kit and what you get in your kit might vary. Okay, one last thing really fast. I know I'm out of time. This is a the Tris Fisher project, Tris Fisher. So for everybody that's having trouble with Tris, T-R-I-S, this is the towel topper. She's going to be getting this in the mail, uh, shipping out tomorrow. And this guy and this guy, they make these. They make these, they make these, but it's really a towel topper a towel topper that you're going to fold in half over and the towel will go here. So this part folds over. You can snap, you can Velcro, you can do buttons, whatever it is. But if you wanted to do the bigger one, then you have this. Both of these have the no slip material on the back. So you have two different sizes. Why does she have two different sizes? Because this becomes a pot handle. It also folds over for the pots that have the little handles on the side that get super hot. So stay tuned for this. She's going to test it out and let me know that that design is good. Okay, I'm way past my time, I'm sure, but I wanted to y'all to see my new projects. Winner, W-I-N-N-E-R, designs.com. 
all of these things that I showed you are not on the website. Yes, give me a day to put them on the website. You can use the WWL coupon code. I'm going to extend it through probably a week after the templates are available so you can take advantage of the 20% off on all of the new templates. So give me a little bit of time to add. I was hoping I'd have them there, but we're not there yet. So everything new takes a little bit of time to get going, but you can take advantage of that coupon code. And I also am doing the $25 gift card that or gift certificate on my website. So if you win, you can go look at my website and tell me what you want, or you can take one of these new things and just say, Linda, do I have more money left or will it cost me a little bit? So we'll work that out, whoever wins. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed some of these new projects and let me know what are your favorites. Thanks, Raylene. I appreciate you calling and asking me to be a part of it. No problem, Linda. And guys, you know, we know that Linda always gives us so many amazing ideas. That's why we try to have her on at least once a month. So uh, I'll be giving her a buzz later because I would love to have her back on right before Valentine's for those last minute Valentine oh, gifts. Nice. Oh, I got so we don't want to wait, We don't want to wait till Easter basket because I know you have terrific what? Valentine stuff. Oh, I, so. love, I do. I do. Lots. So if you can stick around, oh, Linda, for question and answer, we'll be back to you in just a few minutes. Okay, guys, it's that time. Uh, no, Norma, you didn't miss it. You're just in time. Um, we're going to do the secret word. Now, again, if you're new with this and you're not sure how this works, once I give you the, the word, actually, it's a phrase, two words today, you're just going to type it into the comments. You only have to do that one time. And then right after the show, I will compile all that and draw the winners. And then in about an hour after the show ends, Come back to this Facebook page and I will post the winners and tell you how to redeem your prize. And I always use this real bright banner that says winner. So and I usually try to pin it to the top of the page until all the prizes are uh, are claimed. So also, um, I do want to give you one more quick tip. Beth gave you a really good tip about threading your needle earlier. But mine isn't so much a tip as it is a reminder. As we're starting a new year and we're you know all starting to think about our projects for the year, take the time before you get into that and clean and oil your sewing machine. Make sure that you are checking your feed dogs as well. A lot of debris gets packed under those feed dogs. So be sure you're taking out that bobbin holder, you're checking those feed dogs, you're oiling it, however your uh, the manufacturer's book tells you to do it. But, you know, when you start the year with that nice, clean, fresh machine, why not go ahead and put in a nice, fresh, new, sharp needle? Because remember, we're really supposed to change our needle every time we start a new project, even though I know a lot of us are pretty bad about that. I tend to change mine when I break it or bend it. And, you know, don't do what I do, do what I say. OK, <laughs> so um, one other real quick reminder before we bring everybody back in is um, I know there's a lot of people who don't do Facebook. So if you have friends who are watching us after the fact on Facebook, let them know we are now live both on Facebook and YouTube. So you can watch live from YouTube. We actually have some YouTube viewers on today and we're so happy to have you. So you now have the option of watching us live every Wednesday on either Facebook or YouTube. So be sure you spread that to your non-Facebook friends. Okay, so here it is. The word or the actual the two words for today to get into the, the door prize drawing is simply New Year. Just type in New Year. Okay, and while you guys are doing that, we are going to bring uh, Beth and Linda back in. So now is the time also, since you've got your fingers all limbered up typing in the secret phrase. If you have questions for either Linda or Beth, now is the time to type those in and uh, we'll get those answered before we let Linda go. And then Beth and I are going to spend a little more time with you. But uh, <clears throat> so again, if you have questions for Beth or Linda or me, now is the time to type those in. Okay, I see you guys are all busy getting your secret word typed in. So, well, I'm just going to say, Raylene, that was yes. a totally good tip about changing your needle because my daughter just commented that um, she thinks I've never changed my needle in my lifetime. <laughs> I'm, I'm so bad to, about it. I, I'm super bad about it too. But yesterday I was, um, I was doing some um, satin stitching and, oh no, I was sewing, I was sewing some fabric on some diamond art. And I had moved my needle all the way to the left. And um, sometimes I hit a, a diamond art and it mm -hmm. kind of wrecks my needle. Um, yep. But I hadn't hit anything. And it was like just clanking and clanking and clanking. And I re-threaded it. I took the bobbin out. I cleaned it. And it still was an issue. 
I changed the needle and the needle, it fixed everything. So well, it's probably, if you're like me, when that's happening, I didn't realize I bent the end of the needle. Yeah. So it's not going in the little hole. Yeah, that's my biggest issue. And we do have a question for you. Um, what is the finished size of your little snack mat? Um, 10 by 13. Great, 10 by 13. And, uh, oh, Jenny wants to know, Linda, what is the cost of the Valentine gnome kit? She said knob kit, Ooh. but I think she meant gnome. <laughs> I love it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have two different options. I have the gnome template, and can I find it right now? Probably not, but it's two pieces. And it is, you can go to my website and see the gnome kit and the gnome template. So they are on the website. So you can purchase those. What you won't see will be all of the goodies that come in the Valentine's and come in the St. Patrick's Day. I put the Christmas one on sale and it was sold out immediately. And I said, I can't get any more till after the holidays because Martelli was shut down. So <laughs> then when we came back to work, I posted it again and oh, there it is. And people went crazy and bought. So I've already sold a bunch of Valentine's and a bunch of St. Patrick's Day without people knowing even what's in there. So all of this stuff, here's the template. That's the body. It's the back right there. So you can see him here. And it's also the front. You can see right here underneath the beard, you know, this area. So I think he's $19.99. And then I think the kit is $39.99. And that gives you, let me just pull out some of these so you can see the beards. These are just so cool. Look at this beard for my gnome. How cool is that? So you've got these three beards that are going to be included in the package. And then you got a ton of little goodies and stuff. But it is on the website, so you can purchase that now. And use the coupon code, of course, for that. Great. Thank you. Uh, Beth, another question for you. Is your batting, your bamboo batting 100% bamboo, or is it a blend? No, 100%. And we Perfect. have we have it with scrim and without scrim. So for those of you who don't know what scrim is, scrim is kind of like an interfacing that um, holds your batting together so you can quilt further apart. But the one without the scrim, you can put in the microwave and you can also, um, it poofs up more like wool. So I love the one without the scrim. That's what I put in most of my quilts nowadays. Great. And Roxanne, that is a great question. She wants to know, when does the No Gnome Club meet? I'll have to private message you on that because I'm afraid if we announce that they will infiltrate us because they are as evil as those little gnomes are. So we'll just table that for now, Roxanne. But uh, every, there's been two or three people comment they'd like to be part of that little exclusive club. I think there's more of us than you guys realize. But uh, OK. Um, oh, Carolyn wants to know if the kitchen cowl pattern is the same as the kitchen boa. No, they're two different things, Carolyn. You already have, I think, the kitchen boa. That was a kit all in itself with fabrics just for that. The one that we have today, it actually has foundation piecing. Um, so it's a totally different process, actually. Great. And also, Beth, um, do you know offhand what the cost of that batting is? Um, regular bamboo, 96 wide, is, um, I think, $14.95 a yard. And then the... Um, six ounce, which is the one without the scrim. It's the loftier one. That one is, I think, $16.95 a yard. Great. And I saw, I see you, Diane. We got you covered, girlfriend. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, Linda, do your templates come with patterns or, well, of course, they're asking, do you have videos? Guys, she has videos on everything under the sun. <laughs> but the main question was, do the templates come with a pattern? So not really, because when you go to cut, you cut out exactly what it is that you're going to be sewing. So my videos also, most every video that I have, I've got 200 plus, most every video is pretty darn thorough. Um, I find that if I have directions and patterns on my website, they drop and they end up getting lost and it just becomes a paper trail issue. So all of my videos walk you through step by step, but you can always pick up the phone, put me on speakerphone, and I'll tell you how to make it over the phone, so. Great, and um, uh, Judy, her discount code is WWL for 20% off her website. That's for Linda. And Linda, do you have a video for the towel holder? 
Not yet, because Not the yet. template is so new. We've gone through maybe three or four renditions of it. And since it's Triss's design, I need her to test it one more time. So she's getting it tomorrow. So I am going to put it on the website once I get pricing from Martelli, and they did that today for me. So I'll be able to put it on the website, and you can purchase it. You just won't be able to get it from me till I get it back from Triss with the thumbs up that it's good and it works. Awesome. Okay, Linda, I think that's all the questions we had for you today. So we're going to let you go. And I appreciate you again. And guys, remember, uh, she will be back with us next month. I will get the date all locked in with her before she has a chance to tell me no. So <laughs> we'll stay on top of that. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Linda. Bye. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So Beth and I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes with you guys, just kind of letting you know what all's going on with us right now. Um, I, so I'm going to start since I'm hosting, I'm you know going to pull rank on this one. Um, I do want to officially announce a lot of you guys know that Ron and I had made the decision actually before the pandemic hit. And then, you know, everything just kind of changed that we needed to slow down a little bit or at least make our life a little bit more more uh, manageable um, with the three different divisions of the company. It was really, really getting a lot. I mean, guys, I worked on Christmas Day. Do you feel sorry for me? I had, I mean, we just have not had any time down downtime at all. And uh, a lot of that was just because we were spread way too thin with the three different divisions of the company. So as a lot of you know, we, we had put less than traditional, which is our circle technique up for sale. And we are so excited that the company has sold. And uh, it has been purchased by um, Rick and Julie from Off the Wall Quilt, who are another one of our mall vendors who's been on the show a few times. Uh, they're based in Florida. And because of that, though, we are in process of transporting all the merchandise from Arizona to Florida. So it won't be available for purchase until we think about the 10th. Um, Julie thinks that she'll be able to start taking orders for that about the 10th, maybe the 11th. But uh, in the meantime, you don't have to try to remember her website. If you don't remember, it's off the wall quilt, but that will be on our website for at least a year. If you click on less than traditional, there will be a link. So you'll go right to Julie's website. We're just, we're very excited that they are the people who purchased it because um, they're, they're as excited as we were about the product. So they'll be adding things to it, making a lot of changes. And it, again, it's all going to be available just like it was before. And uh, there'll be happy to help you. They're going to be taking just as good a care of you as we tried to do so. But we will still be doing all the exact same shows that we've done, but we will be going under our other name, Just Notions. Um, that is still a Quilters Haven company, but uh, you will see us at the shows with all the crazy notions that we carry, a few patterns, all the tools, the rulers, the square ups, all those acrylic tools and stuff. So we're still around. We're not quite old enough to retire yet, but at least our last few years on the road, hopefully will be a little bit easier. Ron just keeps laughing and shaking his head because he just doesn't even believe that. <laughs> he thinks that just because now there's this much less in the van that I'm going to just fill it back up, but we're going to try not to do that. So. So anyway, so Beth, a couple of things just to remind everybody, because this even came out a lot in the questions. Um, remind everybody when you do your lives every week. Okay, so we do them every Monday and Wednesday at four o'clock, um, unless we're at a show um, or on the road. But pretty much on Mondays, we try to teach you something. So we do demos, techniques, we interview other designers or other teachers. Um, but at four o'clock on Mondays, we always try to do something. If we're super exhausted and overwhelmed, we might just do a bunch of giveaways, but we definitely log on at four on Mondays. And then on Wednesdays at four, we do a sale. So we hold up about 150 items or so. Some of them are one of a kind bags of treasures. Some of them, um, you know, are bolts of fabric, kits, all kind. like we have a variety of stuff, stuff for hand sewers, stuff for crafters stuff for doll makers, stuff for sewists, I, just all kinds of, a huge variety. I try to have something for everybody. And um, today, if we reach, I, I was laughing a little bit earlier because uh, flying objects were hitting me um, because my daughter <laughs> felt that I needed to tell you that to um, tune in because if we get 65 viewers, we're giving away this Ruby Star quilt panel behind me. So it's um, for like a queen size bed and then it makes this little wall hanging here and those two pillows and a, um, all, two pillow shams, all kinds of stuff. So that is a free giveaway if we reach 65 viewers today. So share it with your friends, share it with your quilt guilds, share it with 
anybody you might know. That's awesome. And then you're also going to be at a show in a few weeks, if you want to share that. Okay, we're going to be at Road to California next. Um, I think we leave here on the 15th. I think it starts like the 18th. Um, it's in Ontario, California. It's a huge show, tons of displays, tons of exhibits. We're also teaching there. We're teaching Landscape Elements 101, which you can um, actually see a lot of what we teach there on our YouTube channel. We do demos on how to do um, pine needles and lots of different kind of artsy things. Um, we also do a Zoom on Sundays from one to four. It's free for anybody. It's kind of a social hour. If you have any questions, whether they're regarding anything, um, the ladies there are super helpful. Um, it's, it's kind of a small group, like maybe anywhere from like 12 to 25 ladies get on and they do show and tell. And, um, and if they've learned something new, they share the techniques that they've learned. Um, it's just very laid back. A lot of people just turn off their mics and their video and they just listen and sew for, they just kind of designate one to four is when they, they know they're going to sew and, and chime in and listen and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what we do throughout the week. That's awesome. And uh, again, Beth and I will both be back together again. I can't wait. I've missed my pal, but uh, we I will know, be at Phoenix the, the 27th, 28th, and 29th. And remember, whenever we are at a live show together, and it's actually a quilt craft and sewing festival, which Phoenix is, um, we go live on Wednesdays, but instead of our normal two o'clock Pacific, it's generally at three o'clock whatever the time in the town we're at. And we'll remind you of all this before that, but we give you a great behind the scenes tour of what's going on at the show. And then on Thursday and Friday, we do special lives also at three o'clock local time for wherever the show's at. And we interview some vendors that maybe you haven't seen before or you haven't seen for a while. So we always have a really good time with our lives from the show floor. So again, we'll, we'll be reminding you about all this stuff. And you know, Beth and I have got a lot of other fun things planned for the year. It's just been so crazy busy. We just haven't got everything lined up and wired down just yet, but hopefully soon um, we've got some other fun things that we'll be doing with you guys. So we just appreciate y'all so much. And if you don't have anything else, Beth, I think that about wraps us up today. Perfect. I think that's good. Yeah, I think that's it. We just want to remind everybody that I will be posting the winners of the, of the drawing from today in about an hour. So just check back here and uh, remember to please, please, please support our vendors on the Quilt Craft Show Mall. We really need your support. Um, you know, even though it's busy in January, it's a little slower in February. So we all count on our websites to kind of keep us going and to keep us active. So again, uh, we thank you guys for tuning in and we hope we see you again next week on Wild Wednesday Live. Go out and have a creative rest of the day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Next an hour.